Hey guys, today we are checking out the Core 2 Quad Q9650, which launched in August of 2008, so it's 10 years old, and we can see it's running Fortnite pretty well. But look, Fortnite is not the most demanding game, so let's find out how this processor stacks up in 2018. The Q9650 is a very interesting chip. It is the fastest regular Core 2 Quad. Yes, you can get a faster Extreme Edition and there are also some faster Xeon processors, but uh, in terms of being a regular uh, retail Core 2 Quad processor, the Q9650 is the top dog. In this video, we will have a look at performance in older and newer games. We've got benchmarks, power draw results, and I also had a look at prices. And I will tell you if it's actually worth going for such a system or if you're better off looking elsewhere. So let's have a look at the specifications. We've got four cores running at 3 GHz. We've got 1,333 MHz front side bus, 12 MB of cache. The TDP is 95 watts. And it launched for a price of $530 back in August of 2008. For the test, we're using the same gigabyte motherboard that I bought off AliExpress for $35. We've got 16 gig of RAM to make sure there are no bottlenecks to do with the memory. We've got a Radeon RX 570, a SSD and an SSHD for the games. Running Cinebench, we're getting 335. I also have some power draw results. Sitting idle on the desktop, we're getting 67 watts and running the CPU set stress test 122. So let's dive straight into some benchmarks. We will have a look at prices and gameplay shortly. So first up, we've got 3 Mark, and we have three processors today. The blue one is the i5-2400, red is an i7-4790S, and the gray bar is the processor we're testing today, the Q9650. And we can see in the uh, older benchmarks, it performs uh, behind the i5-2400, but once we go to Firestrike, it is really the video card that's holding everything back. Moving on to Rise of the Tomb Raider, a quite well-optimized game with DirectX uh, 12. It runs really well on the Radeon, but already we can see that the Q9650 is behind the other processors, but not by a huge margin. In Dirt Rally, however, the difference is a little bit more severe. For example, if we pick uh, high details, we are getting 53 FPS, so that's below 60, whereas the other two processors are achieving 71 and 87. Moving on to the next game, we have, yep, yeah, Crisis. Does it run Crisis? So this is the 64-bit version with um, Direct uh, X10 render, and yeah, that game also struggles. For example, if we go with very high details, now let's go with high details. The other two processors achieve over 60 FPS, but the Q9650 only 51. And for Honor, now this game is extremely well optimized. Uh, once you switch to medium details, all the processors perform the same. Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, another Direct X12 game. Once again, we can see the Q9650 lagging behind the other processors. And we've got one more game, Strange uh, Brigade, which uses the Vulkan API. And look at that. That's what good optimization looks like. Um, any of these processors, you get the exact same performance. Now, what about prices? If you want to put together a budget system, it all comes down to how many frames you're getting for your money. And we can see here prices for the processor and the motherboard on AliExpress. I'm aware that you can get better prices by shopping around, but I wanted to pick prices that you can just buy without having to look. And we can see that the uh, Socket 775 platform with the Q9650 is the cheapest one. The i5-2400, the Sandy Bridge system with socket 1155, costs a little bit more, not much. And Haswell with the socket 1150 is the most expensive one. Not so much the motherboard. You can get a motherboard for $42, but the processors are still quite expensive. Now, uh, when you're putting together an entire system, I've got another graph here where we're adding a $199 video card and also $89 for 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. We can see that the cost of the processor is only a small part of the entire cost. So you're not going to save a lot by uh, going with the Q9650 compared to the i5-2400. And I put that into another chart. Here we can see the frames per dollar, so to speak, and we can see 
comparing the Q9650 with the i5 2400 by spending a tiny bit of extra money to get the i5 2400, you're getting a significant performance boost. And we can see that the Haswell platform at the moment doesn't seem to be good value. Um, you're getting a nice performance boost, but you have to pay quite a bit extra. Now benchmarks are interesting, but they might not show you really what's going on. So we're going to have a look at some games. Firstly, some older titles that should run fairly well on this processor. jamming station. So what we're seeing is quite interesting. Dirt 3, for example, runs silky smooth, ultra details, 4x anti-aliasing, and we're getting above 60 FPS all the time. Bioshock Infinite and Borderlands 2, these games perform uh, similar. They are above 60 FPS most of the time, but you will get dips below. And remember, um, this uh, what is shown in the video, uh, those are areas early on in the game, so it might become a lot more demanding later on. And Crisis, well, it, it does run Crisis. We have used very high details and the DirectX 10 64-bit option, so everything is maxed out. But the game is still a challenge to run on this machine. So let's move on to some more modern games and see what this system can do. Mechanics. The cabin crew is allowed upstairs access. I see what you're getting at. Very unorthodox. I like it. Just fruit juice. Better be smart. Here you are. Hello, sir. The target's private deck. Now we're getting somewhere. Ah, but according to Intel, Ritter is another enforcer who picks his own cabin crew. So tread carefully. The target will spot you if you get too close. To eavesdrop on his conversation, try and find a way to blend in. So we can once again see how Doom is really well optimized. It uses the Vulcan API. I use the ultra details and it runs silky smooth. We don't get quite as high FPS as on the other platforms, 
but we are above 60 fps most of the time fortnite runs okay with high details but not so much with uh, epic details i had to dial it down and hitman well that game runs okay with ultra details but we could definitely see the processor struggle especially in the scenes with lots of npcs around the processor is definitely getting a good workout so guys what is the verdict we had a look at the q9650 which is the top mainstream core 2 quad uh, if we're not looking at the extreme editions and the Xeons. so it's always nice to have such a processor and looking at prices uh, i put a graph together a while ago where you can see a couple of core 2 quads and how much they cost on aliexpress these prices seem to change every week um, and the processor now the q9650 costs more um, than i bought it for it's around 40 something dollars um, I got it for around 35 so prices do change all the time and we can see that the Q9650 is not one of the cheaper processors you definitely have to pay a premium but it's not as bad as the extreme edition and we are getting solid performance but uh, Ivy Bridge system um, you're getting more bang for your buck and we saw that in the in the graphs in great detail so the bottom line is if you um, buying parts for a new system you should go with the um, Iverbridge system you're getting much better performance for your money however if you already have a core 2 system uh, a nice socket 775 board with some ram and maybe you're stuck on a q6600 or something like that then it might be worth upgrading to such a faster processor so to sum it up with one in, in one sentence, the Q9650 is an interesting CPU to own and to have fun with, but the value at the moment is uh, with another platform, which seems to be the Ivy Bridge with a quad core. And in terms of gaming performance, we've seen this in the benchmark results, but also in the gameplay footage. Uh, games that are well optimized um, seems to be mostly games that use the Vulkan API, but also many games that use DirectX 12 seem to run better on the slow processor. But do keep in mind that I'm using a Radeon video card. The outcome might be different if you've got something from NVIDIA. So a lot of games will run just fine on this machine, but there are also quite a few games that uh, yeah what do you call two platform um, is getting a bit uh, old and you will definitely not get the highest fps now uh, whether or not you consider this to be playable that's of course totally up to you now we're not done with socket 775 yet i got a lot of questions about comparing ddr2 with ddr3 so i got myself a motherboard an asus motherboard from aliexpress which takes both memory types so that's something we will look at and of course huge video with the Xeons using uh, Xeon processors with LGA 771 and modding them to work in a 775 motherboard and there we have faster processors available so yeah stay tuned we're not done with socket 775 and maybe we can get some extra performance out of this machine and that's really it for this video guys thank you so much for watching as always if you find this uh, video interesting be sure to subscribe to the channel give it a like share it with your friends and that's it thank you so much i shall see you soon with another one